So Lester Fanganuku is leaving New Zealand rugby. He joins a long list of players who are leaving, but I do think his case is slightly different from the rest of them. We'll get to that in a second. I should say we will balance this out with a bunch of guys who are can kind of uh, confirmed to be staying as well because it's a little bit when you see cases like this it looks a little bit kind of doom and gloom for New Zealand rugby but um yeah he's off to France this is his last year with uh, with New Zealand rugby and it kind of brings into question whether you take him to a World Cup because not always I mean Tawera Kobalo famously made a World Cup final uh, despite the fact that he'd already signed to go abroad but generally the guys who are staying get priority over the guys who are leaving, which kind of makes sense from a New Zealand perspective. But how's it been going this season? Well, he's the top equal try scorer uh, with Sean Stevenson playing the house down for the Crusaders uh, in Super Rugby. And um, I mean, his attacking numbers are pretty good. He breaks tackles. He makes clean breaks. Hasn't really kind of set up many or any tries that I'm aware of. Uh, I don't think he had any try assists. Tackling numbers are not the flashest, but he... He plays on the wing, so they tend to have kind of worse defensive numbers. But certainly, uh, there's no questioning the guy going forward. Uh, managed to get a taste of All Blacks actions uh, last year, but then kind of found himself slightly out of favor. I believe it was kind of reported that he was in the final stages of signing a deal, and then Scott Robertson looked to have maybe swooped in as the future All Blacks coach and asked him to stay, but it doesn't seem to have been enough because, um, as I said, uh, he is off to France. So it's a pity, and I do think it is a bit different. I say different because when you look at the guys who are leaving, and in no particular order, you've got Barrett, Moonga, Aaron Smith, Brody Retellick, uh, Shannon Frizzell. All these guys are going to Japan. you got um, Sam Whitelock, I believe, going to Poe. So cool to go to Clermont. So a few guys going to France. RTS is going back to the Warriors. Uh, Brad Weber is going to France. I think Lalala is going to France. But the difference between all of these guys and Lester Fayanganuku is they're all either into their 30s or late 20s. The youngest of the lot leaving is Soakula at 28, who kind of got you know a little bit shafted by the All Blacks in terms of getting a taste of international action and then the rug pulled out from under him, not really seemingly being any fault of his own. So at 23 years old... Lester Fanganuku is by far the youngest of all these guys who've kind of confirmed that they'll be leaving New Zealand rugby at the end of this kind of international cycle. Of the guys who are staying, there are plenty of guys who are older than uh, than Lester. I mean, recent kind of uh, contract signings, ALB is extended to 2026. He's 28. Rico is extended to 2027. He's 26. So he's kind of in a similar age range, although a lot more experienced than Leicester. But still, he was one of the guys who kind of said, uh, he talked about legacy rather than finances. Although there is a sabbatical in Rico's contract where I think he gets 2025 off. So he'll certainly be boosting his finances while staying in New Zealand. Um, I guess that's the difference between being one of the kind of top guns with heaps of caps. You can do the sabbatical thing. Uh, whereas if you're a fringe guy like Lester, you probably don't have that kind of negotiating power. Uh, D-Max through to 2025, Tokyo 27, uh, to groups through to 2026, David Harvili to 2025, Tyrell Lomax, Jordy Barrett, Scott Barrett, all those guys are 2026 or 2025. I mean, Clark, Papali'i, Tua all 2024, Severis, Reese, Petofetis, Tupavai, Adi Savia. Adi Savia is going to have next year off from New Zealand rugby, but he's still extended to 2025. So, yeah. There's a bunch of guys, Sam Kane, Ethan Blackadder, both of those guys are staying as well. So, um, yeah, there are a bunch staying. Although, as I said, a few have kind of got sabbaticals in there, but it is a real kind of pity to lose Leicester at this age and this point of his career. You do feel like he would have got back into the All Blacks at some point. It's kind of reminiscent of Charles Pietau, because he also left, I think, when he was 23, although he had a lot more All Blacks caps than... Um, then Leicester has had a chance to accumulate. But yeah, similar age range. So it will be interesting to see whether Leicester kind of, um, you know, sticks with kind of one club like um, like some of the guys do, or whether he becomes a bit of a journeyman like Piatau ended up uh, being. Remember, Piatau has gone on to represent Tonga as well. So his international career wasn't done uh, upon leaving 
uh, upon leaving New Zealand, but it did take a wee while for them to change the old eligibility laws. I mean, there's even fringe guys leaving New Zealand, which is a, um, a concerning one for New Zealand rugby's death. I mean, depth with like Tom Robinson, Alex Nankerville, some of those kind of guys who couldn't quite get themselves into the All Blacks framework heading overseas as well. So you do wonder uh, how New Zealand rugby's depth is doing, but it feels familiar. I don't know about other New Zealand fans at this moment, but we kind of come to expect that there will be a big exodus of guys after a World Cup. That's just to be expected. It happened after 2015, happened after 2019, and it's going to happen again in 2023. I guess the most important part is that we don't get too many guys like Leicester who are leaving. Uh, you kind of prefer it to be the guys at the end of the career. I do feel like some of these guys leaving like are a little bit younger than what it used to be. Like the fact that Moonga is still in his 20s, albeit late 20s, um, you know, is a little bit younger. But I mean, most of these guys, 31 is Barrett, Bodie Barrett, 34 Aaron Smith, 31 Retellick. Um, you know, those guys have kind of done their time. So for them to leave at that age, it's not quite as surprising uh, as it's when someone who's kind of, you know, 23 and just seemingly kind of on the right trajectory for getting yourself into a World Cup squad. But anyway, Leicester's off. What do you guys reckon? Uh, do you reckon we've got heaps of outside backs and uh, his potential presence with the All Blacks is easily replaced? Or do you think it's concerning? Uh, do you reckon we just kind of get used to exoduses after a World Cup? Or do you think the age of guys who leave New Zealand rugby is going to continue to drop? I do feel like the hardest ones to retain are the ones who are just outside the All Blacks framework. The likes of uh, uh, Alex Nankerville, who never quite, you know, gets to to grab that black jersey. You know, I mean, if Sean Stevenson doesn't get an All Blacks cap soon, I would be surprised if he stayed in New Zealand. He's another one of those guys in that kind of uh, age range and ability level, right? So, yeah. You guys, let us know your thoughts. And, uh, yes, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.